sometimes our whole worldview gets shaken at the very core. And in my particular case, that came in the form of a near-death experience, a week spent in coma from bacterial meningitis. And coming back from that, I had to completely change my view as an academic neurosurgeon with more than 20 years of experience into the relationship between the mind and consciousness and what consciousness truly is. And I think that is one of the things that we're uh, investigating in research here at the Monroe Institute that is absolutely fascinating because the old paradigm of seeing that the brain and physical reality give rise to consciousness is not what I saw in my week in coma. And in fact, all of my studies since then, trying to understand my experience deep in coma, uh, leads me to believe that in fact consciousness is the primary entity in the universe. And we need to understand much better how consciousness generates this apparent reality. And so, what I've found is that in many ways, uh, rethinking my view of consciousness and mind and brain and seeing the primary role of consciousness uh, involved becoming much more of a pioneer into a new way of thinking that I think uh, many, many writers and uh, many philosophers, scientists have been going somewhat in this direction over the last few years. Uh, but it really is all coalescing now that with the work we do here at Monroe Institute and with a lot of thinking about uh, extended consciousness, that is consciousness outside of physical brain and outside of physical reality, uh, is very much uh, a fact of life. And here at the Monroe Institute, uh, I see that Bob Monroe was very much uh, a pioneer in this kind of thinking, he was way ahead of his time. And now we are trying to do the work to catch up with the vision that he had in looking at uh, really the, the unlimited possibilities inherent in human consciousness.